your iron bolts. This is the whole thing about the electric universe. The electric universe explains things that the physicists and the geologists otherwise can't. So, I think geology needs a revisit. We have a field called geoelectrics. But interestingly, it inter intersects with classics in a really interesting way. And classics, because of the discoveries and the revelations that there is, I think Melikovsky has got some errors, and he didn't know about Sierra, and he, he put Sierra, blamed it on the comet, but no, no, the, the comet was, if there was an earlier one flood, it was 6,000, you know, if the, the comet was associated with the flood, you know, wipeout of Atlantis, it was earlier ones, so it wasn't 1,700, so the 1,700 was Sierra, but he didn't know about Sierra yet, you know, so he didn't have all the information yet, but he was working on what he knew. I won't go into the mythology, you know, they didn't know Uranus existed, but you know, before, before Saturn existed, there was only space. That suggests that we were floating in the void by ourselves until Saturn came along and became our star. Until it was not out of being our star, or whatever happened there, you know, according to Velikovsky, that wound up in the separate orbits. But if that happened, then that kind of that kind of convergence of the planets has happened before, and the discharges between the ice caps. This is what I was saying about what caused the formation of the ice caps in the first place for the millions of years they were there before these little warming periods we've been through and the one we've ended for the one we've ended we'll never see an ice age again the way things are going with hot on earth unless the volcano happens again and yeah that can happen again that might save our skins it might kill us all but the heat's going to kill us either way that's interesting to watch I'm not afraid I've lost all fear well physical harm but it's a strange, strange world we live in, Master Jack. I closed with last night. So this I'm going to put online for sure. Um, I'd already done one to Dr. Zick Zentner, Zent, Nick Zentner at Central Washington for his excellent uh, Geology of Washington series. I was watching his one on the exotic terrains and had some comments on how you know, the Americans and the Canadian knowledge test needs to integrate. As this is, we all eventually need to integrate. Manifest destiny, we should just, especially here in the Northwest where we share a common history and a common heritage, and they don't know much about us and we don't know much about them. And we even, we even, our geography has even made a point of naming our ranges differently than the American classifying. Same with our eco regions and eco zones, is a different system than the Americans use. But anyway, so I'm trying to help him inform him about here and hope he can tell us some interesting things about BC. I will be doing that in the Fraser Canyon. Uh, and, and also there's some well beautiful places there I'm going to go high up and talk about the gold rush and also about about the mountains and the stars and maybe maybe I'll be playing my music but maybe I don't know we'll see what I come up with high up there um, uh, it's a magical country even though it's not as spectacular where as I'm from but I think that whole Fraser Canyon from Boston Bar Hell's Gate up was ice free or under the ice. Why were the lake bottoms, you know, at High Bar, going up to Fraser uh, from Pavilion, the benches at Pavilion are even higher than Keatley Creek. So that, all that was underneath. The ice cap was on the higher level of like where the Diamond S Ranch is on Pavilion Mountain. There's a higher level like Jesmond, the Jesmond Plateau, you know, and the Gang Ranch Plateau. There's that, that lower valley must have existed underneath the glacier. And there must have been lakes underneath the glacier or were there gaps in the glacier, even though there was still the coastal ice caps, the coastal massive, ice massive. But the Fraser, I think, was ice free in that area. Although, although another lobe went down and over, melted down and went down out the Okanagan, something about the Fraser Canyon doesn't make sense to me. And the lobe, the lobe that's shown on Nick Sentner's map, he ends at the Whatcom County boundary instead of showing the lower mainland. Like it's an American thing, they can't see the Canadian landscape, they can't talk about it. I don't know why that is. They've wanted it for years. You think Manifest Destiny, they'd be plotting it, looking at it. Maybe only the State Department is. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure the military's had a good long look at it. But, but uh, you know, that, that that there's some odd things there. I pointed out some rills in Everson. You know, like there's little, like when water runs really fast, it leaves like some little sand ripples in the sand, you know? And how big they are. So what's the volume of water that came out of there? It was a sudden rush of water. Was it the Lahar? The debris flow out of out of Meager, or was it a sudden melt of the Lillooet ice cap, Lillooet glacier? It would be the Lillooet and the Somalo, Lillooet Somalo. Yeah, pretty big. Cockahalla didn't have much of a glacier, you know. Uh, 
it would have been that or was it that or was it or was it a sudden melt what caused the sudden melt of the coastal ice caps and the Fraser ice caps so the dating of the the dating of the the bench lands in the Fraser Canyon the high benches versus the plateau that's known to have been scraped by the ice I don't know if there's drumlin formations I, I missed finishing something I was saying to Dr. Zentner in my previous video about the Quinell and Shishwap and Okanagan Highlands, there's some debate as to whether they're part of the interior plateau or part of their respective Caribou Mountains and Monashies and Selkirks, right? Or in the case, yes, all Monashies all the way down from, from the Shishwap Highland. There's no connection to the Selkirks. Uh, and when did the, when, when did the, when did the Rocky Mountain Trench drain? When did when did all that empty? I don't think it was the ice free corridor, but it was formed a long time ago by the ice. But this is his Lake Missoula waters came down out of the Kootenai Lobe, I think it's called, uh, which is a Rocky Mountain trench goes all the way to the Liard River, almost all the way to the Yukon, into the Selwyn Mountains, which is a continuation of the Rockies on the north side of the Liard all the way to the Brooks Range. That's wild country. I've never been through there. There are no roads in that country. Nothing in that country. Someday that may be the only country there is up there. But the scale of British Columbia is hard to reckon with to travel around and see it. So just even one small area like the Fraser Canyon, you know, and then the Chilcotin basalts are still over in the Nicola country to the southeast. And, you know, there's things right around the volcanic horns at the top of, at the top of, we get up on top of Mount Stoyoma, just about east of where I'm going to be living. And I would see the, the Anderson River group, which are these spectacular carved horns and sugar loaves of the northern, the northern end of the Cascade Mountains, which technically go all the way to Lytton Mountain uh, at Lytton. And Stoyoma is part of them. But these are the last peaks, you know, other than rounded tops like Stoyoma or Lytton. Uh, anyway, I can be able to see them. And I'll be able to see back over the little range. And then I'll be able to see the blank in the landscape where the maw of the Fraser Canyon was carved through. But I think climatologically and evolutionarily, maybe maybe there's a lot written on the glaciology and sedimentology of the Fraser Canyon. I would sure hope there is because there's been so much work on the on the mineralogy. But so with, as all the mining studies, you can learn a lot. But in terms of a narrative of, of, of it for the popular understanding, not just miners, the problem in British Columbia, I was going to comment this to Dr. Zentner before I go, too, uh, to, to everybody, that at one time, a BC base map and other government mapping services and information were free. Same with StatsCam. Now that's ever since the Tories and Social Credit and since the Liberals, uh, since, uh, that's all become pay as you go. you got to pay for access. you got to register. You can't just start generating maps and examining data. You have to pay for it now. Same with the detail, like ethnic data, socioeconomic voting data, all that stuff is data you have to pay for. So that's made information available only to those with money. So I believe in open source. And not consensus. Wikipedia is bullshit. Consensus never means consensus. It means vetoes by idiots. That's what it means. Uh... But I do believe in open source. And I've wondered about, you know, e even though my music, of course, you know, you want to get something for what you do, right? But anybody who wants to cover me, I'd appreciate it. Just kick me back some money. Or if you do it on a proper recording, I'm a SoCan guy, right? But but for this, uh, for clips of me, when I'm talking about any of my science or history, classics, any of the stuff to do with the electric cosmos or British Columbia politics, Canadian politics, the Wet'suwet'en thing, the Canyon Wars, Indian Wars here, ancient history things that I come up with, yeah, let's make me open source. I'm cool with that. Now, I, I haven't started a Patreon yet. I have to do that. I'm moving. I'm trying to get my life together. I just got off the phone with the government to arrange. You know, i got to get quotes on moving costs to get where I'm going by the end of the month. And, you know, when I, once I get settled high up in the mountains, you know, the young professor has found his calling. So I hope you appreciate the stories that you hear from me. Then the perspectives I bring for you on on things that we've known for a long time but never really known to look at properly. And also things about things about Canadian history that really, quite frankly, the rest of the world 
will find it really interesting, but they'll also find it they need to know the truth about about this country, the nice dominion. I would say that with great irony. Uh, my head's getting cold. I do have pneumonia. No, I won't. I won't gonna get pneumonia. I am an old man, but I'm gonna be healthy again. I'm gonna be playing beautiful music and dancing in the mountains. And you know, I have some young friends that I think are you know. There's only so many of us that are angels, and we all have to find each other right now and do our best. You know, to work towards the to work towards what what to share all the information and the good the goodwill that we have for all. You know, to try and put together uh, ideas and plans.